Now, July the 18th marks the centenary of the birth of Nelson Mandela. Every year on this day, people around the world are asked to continue his life's work through acts of kindness. Mandela Day events are being held in South Africa and in other countries to celebrate the legacy of the anti-apartheid icon. On Tuesday, former U.S. President Barack Obama delivered the 2018 annual Mandela Lecture in Johannesburg. He painted a grim picture of global events, but tempered it by saying he believes in Mandela's vision of equality, justice and freedom. It was a royal affair in the United Kingdom as Prince Harry and his new wife, Meghan Markle, visited an exhibition in honor of Mandela. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex met Mandela's friends and family. The Mandela exhibition has been shown in various forms around the world, including six weeks at the Paris Town Hall. As the world remembers the birth of Mandela, some have wondered the extent to which his legacy is helping shape and influence South Africa as it strives to become a more pluralistic democracy. For some perspective, I'm joined in studio by Paul Nantolia, a political analyst and researcher at the National Defense University's Africa Center for Strategic Studies. He worked with the African National Congress in South Africa. Uh, Paul, welcome uh, back to Africa 54. Thank you, Vincent. It's a pleasure to be here again. Wow. A day uh, that uh, we are thinking about a man who captured the imagination of everybody in the world. Indeed. Here's Indeed. a question. Uh, as, you, as you observe this day, you were very close to where he was very influential in South Africa and within the African National Congress. Uh, how was his influence felt or at least manifested through the party? Yes, in a number of ways. And I think one of the most critical issues is that uh, he modeled a leadership style that became part and parcel of the principles uh, of leadership that the ANC adheres to. Uh, one of those, of course, is uh, political honesty. And uh, you would recall uh, shortly after his release, he visited New York uh, to address, uh, to address a, a gathering there. And he narrated uh, an experience, uh, you know, in the 1960s, the African National Congress was looking for countries that could offer them bases and offer them support, diplomatic support, military support as well. And one of the countries they, uh, they uh, approached was Libya. Uh, and it was, it was a very, very desperate time. They really needed that, uh, that support. And they wanted to open an office in Libya. And uh, they, right off the bat, uh, informed the Libyan government that they had uh, uh, Jewish uh, uh, people, you know, you know, they had Jews uh, who were uh, playing a very important role in their military structures as well as their political structures at a very high level. And they said, listen, you have to take us as we are. Yeah. We're working with the Jews. And uh, because of that, the Libyans uh, refused uh, to open, an, you, know, you know, they refused uh, that request. And uh, they actually placed uh, conditions on the ANC and said, listen, you've got to sever these ties. And the ANC said, no, you know, you've got to accept us as we are. Uh, the same principle was applied with uh, Sinn Féin. The ANC had relations with Sinn Féin. Yeah but also had a relationship with the, with the British uh, government and were honest enough to tell both sides that, listen, yeah. uh, you know, we have these relationships. So it was a principle of honesty. Uh, when he was in New York, he said that, uh, you know, anybody who shifts and changes his position based on the person that he's talking to at the moment uh, does not qualify to be a leader. And, and that was a critical principle of the ANC. And this was a very strong man with that kind of a principle. But looking at uh, what has been going on inside the ANC in the last several years, uh, have the men and women in the ANC actually upheld those principles? Do we see that level of honesty, that level of, uh, you know, sincerity even when it comes to serving the citizens of South Africa? Right. I mean, I think this is one of the biggest battles uh, facing the ANC because, uh, I mean, essentially the party is uh, sort of uh, gravitating in between uh, sort of the Mandela generation, you know, the Robben Island generation and the generation that came after, you know, the Tabombeki, Tokyo Sehwale, Cyril Ramaphosa, uh, you know, Kada Asmal and others. You know, there's that generation of leadership. But then you also have another, another uh, you know, incoming sort of a younger uh, echelon of leadership in the country that is kind of being perceived as not holding true to those principles. So it's an ongoing battle in the ANC. But one would say that uh, those principles that Mandela, people like Oliver Tambo and his colleagues, Walter Sisulu, the principles that they embodied, you know, still have a constituency within the ANC. And I think this is one of the, this is one of the issues that we see playing out right now in the yeah. country. One of the things I heard Mandela said, I thought it was very admirable, is that he did not want to be considered a, a saint. Right. And uh, what uh, did that translate into? I mean, what, what are people to understand right. about 
him that, you know, in, in his honesty makes him not be a saint. Right. I mean, Mandela was one of the first people who said that he did not want to be lionized. Uh, actually, one of the, uh, you know, there are quite a number of things that uh, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, members of your audience might not be aware of. Uh, he actually refused uh, uh, to be um, a nominee for the president of the country, uh, you know, while the negotiations were, be were being conducted to end apartheid. Uh, but that was a collective decision that was taken. He felt that Oliver Tambo needed to take over the leadership. But his colleagues uh, said, listen, I mean, for historical reasons, uh, you would be better placed to actually take the organization forward. However, uh, at that particular Congress, he undertook to only serving one term. Mm -hmm. He didn't need to, but he undertook to serving only one term. Wow. So, I mean, he was, he was, he was really honest to that, to that, to that level. It's a, indeed, yes. it was an extraordinary yes. Yes. man. Thank you very Absolutely. much, Paul, for joining us today Thank you. Uh, to share uh, those perspectives with us. That is Paul and Antulia, who is a, a political analyst, is a researcher also at the National Defense uh, University's Africa Center for Strategic Studies.